I don't want to start this podcast off with a bummer. Right? <laughs> Everyone's liars. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to start this off with a bummer, guys. Okay, my OCD is through the roof. Really? Yeah. I, I, For what please reason? Comment, like, give, give us an example. Okay, so uh, the other day I went to the kitchen, right, to, and I was with my girlfriend and I had put the door stopper, like hadn't quite touched the wall. And so I had to leave and yeah, go which down. is highly dangerous. I'm fully with you on that. Yeah, but it's just my, my OCD is like through the, like to point, I played golf on the weekend and I, and I hit a piece of turf out of the ground, right? Uh-huh. And then I walked like 20 meters up and I had to run back and. Yeah, I mean, yeah, dude. you have to stamp that shit back in. That's just, okay. that's just yeah, common I courtesy. Couldn't, yeah, think, that right? is just common courtesy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's my OCD. It's really, do you, do you, do you get OCD ever? Do you ever get OCD? I, I do sometimes. It, this is weird, but I get it when I highlight scripts. Like uh, if, if the highlight's a bit out on my iPad, I need to erase it and do a straight one. I know it's weird. And you're, you're the, <laughs> you're the only person who's going to see this. That must be really, really I'm painful. the only person that will ever see it. Yeah. It can't go out of the line. Did you at school, did you used to get the ruler and, and highlight it that way? Yes. Oh, I was one of them. Oh, those no. were really annoying. But then, no, no, no. But then I would annotate it and the annotations would be everywhere. Like it just, it just doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. I think I needed some clarity amongst the chaos did, did you guys ever cheat in in exams and yeah. write stuff on your pencil case on your arms you know what i've never admitted this but i'll tell you oh, this is first. Here we I, go. yeah i did cheat in my french gcse i wrote all the verbs and stuff at the <laughs> wee top wee of my thighs wee wee and i was like this like with my skirt on the exam Sorry, she's lifting Sorry. up your skirt. Sorry, yeah. if what? the teacher comes over, you're like, stop fucking perving. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, there we go. So wait, hang on. So you used, yeah. to, you used to ride it on your leg, and that's how you used to. Well, cheat. not used to on that one occasion. Yeah, I just wasn't ready, and I also wasn't ready to fail. That's actually a really it's smart. <laughs> Did you used yeah, to cheat? Initiative. Yeah, I, I had my pencil case. I had a see-through pencil case, and you could Ooh. write write stuff on it. And then if you pushed the calculator up against yes. the, it, would then like you could read it. Yes, and what about the calculator case, but with your phone inside? I've never Sorry, what is Sorry, this? how so, small was your phone? Yeah, yeah, what the hell okay. is going on? Okay, so you know how you have like a calculator and then you had like a lid that slid over the calculator yeah, yeah, so yeah. it didn't just press random numbers. How annoying when that you lid just didn't used... slide on. How annoying. <laughs> so frustrating. Do you remember writing boobs at <laughs> the calculator yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that? I was just, yeah. It was on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> I, <could laughs> I, I was like, please finish so I can say that. Yeah. <laughs> but there you go. Well, I used to take the lid yeah. and then yeah. just, because you could put it on the back of the calculator as well, couldn't you? Just to hold it whilst you were... Yeah. Anyway, I used to put my phone in the lid, so I'd just be on my phone. What? Great. I'm great at pub trivia. That is unreal. Like pub quizzes yeah. or trivia. That is un- I did a, um I did a game show the other day. So I whistled just there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I okay. did a game show the other day. Um, <laughs> Where's this going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just did this game show the other day, and it was all about music, and I had Shazam. On, on your phone? On the phone. Jamie. Wait, wait, what? Yeah. Surely, surely the there's cameras on you, like, can they not see you? Yeah, it was televised. It's televised. Wait, what? <laughs> wait, yeah. so you did a game show that was televised? Yeah. And I, wow. And I, and I, use, I, I can't I, wait to see this. I shouldn't. I, every single time I lean down and go, oh, what is it? And I'm just looking at my Shazam. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Celine Dion, 1982. <laughs> Pete, they must have thought you were a genius. <laughs> I know, they did. Do they, <laughs> they were like, they <laughs> Got a Rain Man in, like a five second Rain Man. Knows nothing and then suddenly but, knows everything. But what is something? Yeah, when, yeah, yeah. When you, when you are doing your, when you're learning your scripts. Yes. And you forget lines. Yes. Because it does happen, right? Yes. Even to the best of us. Yes. Yes. How do you, do you then, can you cheat somehow by learning your lines easier? If that makes sense. There are techniques to learning on, lines to easier. Us. Yeah. You've got, um, you've got your phone in the, in the calculator. Do you know what I did there, do like. to get into drama school? Again, I here we go. I, 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 you open I had, it up like, yeah, I cheated once. Now there's like just series <laughs> after series of cheating things going really? on. Yeah. Revealing well, everything it's, yeah, it's exactly what we were talking about before the podcast. Um, but I had this really long blonde hair, which I think I had when I first met you. Yeah. And it was just a great place to hide headphones. So Sorry, how long was your hair? It was so like, long. Rapunzel. It was down, no, no, no. I mean, listen, it just needs to be past the ears, right? But it was down to my hips, but I just used to slot some headphones into my ears, just like yeah. mini pods. Oh, sorry. I was like, imagine because yeah. you were wearing no. big headphones. I was like, it's going to be quite my big. My hair's just so. full of secrets. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I had a Shakespeare monologue to get into dra- yeah. to drama school, which I wasn't, come on. Like, what what Shakespeare. Shakespeare was it? What was it? Honestly, probably 
Something, uh, something epic. Like much to do about nothing or something like that. I have no when, idea. Little, I, I didn't learn it, so like I don't it, know. A little niche on it. When, when a little, <laughs> I don't know. Like uh, just you know, one of the smaller like niche <laughs> ones. <laughs> just, yeah, a little bit niche. Just a little bit niche. That's what I'm about. <laughs> No, no, no. You you know, it was probably something in. so obvious. Yeah. And I just, I just, you know, I didn't have the time. I felt like I didn't have the time to learn it. So I pre-recorded it. I went into the audition. I just pressed play. And I literally just recited what I was saying in my ear out loud. And they went, <laughs> at the end, I was like, is this a joke? Because you can't hear yourself because you're only listening. I was going to say, you've got to keep up with your pace. It was if you way lo- harder if you lose than pace, I thought. Oh, then or, yeah, fucked. yeah. If you lose pace, over. you've lost the line. You're fucked. Oh my god, that, is, that would stress me out. That, that would really stress me un- out. That's way more stressful than learning it. Like, you're, you're like a secret agent or something. Like, I think you should have gone to the FBI. No, but, but I no think, comment. But you must be very good at you must be very good at multitasking. Yeah, I am. I'm not very good at listening. But I feel like, but but what is your you you must be in your both your parents went to Oxford and Cambridge, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, you're, you're incredibly smart in lots of ways. And I don't I th- think that's what that means, no, Jamie. Well, well, <laughs> but after, I think, after we've just discussed how she no, cheated her way But I do, school. I do, I do think it is. Cause I think also when you, when you get into character, right. Yeah. For, especially for all of your roles and things you're doing, do you, are you one of the people that becomes the character or do you still see it as acting? No. Uh, the first one. You I, become the character. I don't necessarily, I'm not. Cause that's juxtaposing to like just hearing it, right? Yes, I, I, I've never done it where I've been in character the whole time. I've spoken in an accent the entire the entirety of a shoot, um, so from day one to the last day. And actually, what's so oh crazy is that I did oh. yes, I did what, what a British show. Well, it is no <laughs> Bristolian. <laughs> well, Sorry. it's not. Sorry. <laughs> that, that, I can't do that show kind of done that I can only... <laughs> Bristolian. It was so no, quick. no, it Bristolian. was very. <laughs> Bristolian? <laughs> I don't know what that Bristolian? is. Bristolian? I don't know. You worked in Bristol. Is that like, good? Bristolian is like, you, you talk, you talk hey, that, like that's that. That's more West Country. No, that. yeah, West that's West Country. Like, hello there, boy. Can anyone here Brast- actually do a Bristolian Brastle. accent? Bristol. It's a bit like that, no? No, that's too that, that, that that's was too a far. little bit closer than, than man and Jamie's. Yeah, a little bit. Bristol. Bra- no, Brastle. I think that was Irish. <laughs> Bristol. Wait, hang on. So, so, so you've done shoots where you're in, you stay in the accent the entire time? Yes. Usually uh, when I started doing American... But I did it once. This is funny. When I was doing um, an ITV show here, I had to do an RP accent. And so I stayed like that the entire time, but, but way more posh. And then, and even, it was probably about two years later, I was down in a pub, um, actually in Southwark. And I bumped, into, <laughs> I bumped into a castmate of mine who played my twin brother. And we had a, an entire conversation. He was kind of looking at me like that. And then just as our friends all started leaving, he grabbed me and he went, what are you doing putting on that accent? Shut and I went, what? And he went, why are you putting on an East London accent? I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, you, you never used to speak like that. And I was like, oh my gosh, you've never met me. Because you never changed it. Yeah, because I, I had never changed it. It was just for that isolated shoot. Is that, is that, a, um, is that a sort of thing as a technique or is that like a comfort thing? Um, I, I don't find it very comfortable. I think it's just, it takes away an element of, nervousness or like preparation for like just being on the day because then I start to think or I read my scripts in America I was gonna say are your you know? thoughts in yes. the accent they are they they yes if I'm doing that they'll be in American like I, I'll read things in American mm. which is very weird that is, I always find like especially with acting it's so weird you could say you're on set with someone <laughs> Sorry. Hey, I'm just throwing you, you and me in a barrel together. You, so you do this. You do this with every guest, whether it's like yeah, yeah. a huge, a huge actress. You and I or like, are or like a touring like. band. He's like, yeah, yeah, I can relate. I'm like, no, you can't. It's like, I just, just going to throw us into a barrel together. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay. As actors, we. <laughs> <laughs> that laugh so, was yeah. said a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In her going, oh, I go, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What a no, no, I'm not. <laughs> but uh, no, I. But I think that when you're on set with someone, yeah, <laughs> like I know. But when you're but, on set, but you have been. No, You've have had been. your own experiences. I had my own experiences. Yeah. For some reason, when you're playing a character, it doesn't matter if you're playing your yourself and a bit amped up or whatever it is. Yeah. There's a weird comfortability that you create, and I think with actors mm-hmm. they have it. When you're a character with someone on set. You, there, there's no social awkwardness. You become a child almost again in a certain yeah. way. Why does that happen? I think, you know, as, as artists, you're both putting yourself in a really vulnerable position. I mean, you have to be to, to act. Like you have to be comfortable with being vulnerable. And it's hard, you know, when there's a crew of 100, 200 people like, you know, on set with you. 
So I think there's just this unspoken like sense of safety within two performers that is that just happens to be there. I, I've been fortunate enough to never have that experience where it just hasn't been there. Really? Yeah, I don't know what it takes. I don't I don't like consciously shift anything. It just seems to be like a very comfortable space. But if it wasn't like that, I don't think I could I could act. Do you get because I mean I get days where like I just have an off day and I yeah. I struggle to be sociable, let alone like go and put on a full persona. Do you ever have days where you just can't really get into character? Absolutely. Yeah, probably more more of them. Really? Than Is that not. like a writer's yeah. block? Wait, explain it's that. All you're, 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 it's literally the worst. You're in your trailer going, Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> Bristol. Oh, Bristolian. Fuck this, I'm but, out. Yeah. But you do do that with accents. <laughs> Bristolian. Bristolian. <laughs> but you do have that with accents. Like you have keywords that will break you back into that accent. Um, What's your Jamaican one? <laughs> <laughs> <Beer can. laughs> can. Be a can. Be a can. But something like that would be like a break word, which gets oh, you into the accent. Yeah. So like, I've never done a Southern accent, but I have friends that have had to do like, you know, a really Southern American accent and they Come can on. swing into it. No, Come on, I can see you about, you had no, a little no. twinge. I know. <laughs> you had a little twinge. You, you had, never, you're like, good, give it a go. <laughs> Oh, I could be on oh, this podcast. <laughs> Give it a big old go, Johnny. I said South. I said South, <laughs> Jamie. Why are you? Why are you lifting your leg up as well? <laughs> South. Oh, He's getting what? into character. Yeah, I hurt my arm this morning. Like, you don't, quite you don't have a break word. You just like pull your leg up, and you're like, all right, <laughs> but, or a break movement. Yeah, but I think. But what is with you? You've kind of been sort of front and center of like lights, camera, action from a really, you, you were, you were a model at the age of 13. Yeah. That is wild. Well, when I look back at it now, it freaks the fuck out of me. But when I was 13, I thought I was an adult. Mm. How does that happen? Just explain it. Cause that's really young to make a decision. Like I'm going to go and model. It's really young, 13. Yeah. I was just really up myself. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> I, I should be a model. Fucking hard. <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's not like she was like, right, I'm going to go do this. You usually get scouted. That's kind of how it goes. Uh, right? Not in my world, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I really? On, I honestly was like, I am a fucking model. <laughs> I'm like, I'm oh, I thought you were talking about you. <laughs> no, I, it didn't. It was me. Oh. Honestly, I swear to God, I have not told you this. I told you this when I was walking down tell the road. Us. I was walking down the road. I think I told the story before. I was walking down the road and Abercrombie and Fitch had just started. Right, and oh, it was brilliant. Yeah, oh, this, with the, the topless dudes. Yeah, the thought, clothing yeah. store, topless dudes. It just come to London. Yeah. It was big in America, and I was like, and these, so what were you doing there? Okay, get ready. For it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like this. Get ready for this. Anyway, I was walking down Kensington High Street. I got pulled over by these two guys. They said, "You're the look we're looking for," and I was like, "For what?" They went for Abercrombie and Fitch, and I was like, "Damn straight, this is it." Anyway, so they said, uh, "Why don't you come to the Abercrombie Fitch opening party? It's going to be great. You can meet all the people there, and then you can come work in the store." I was like, "Great." Went to the party, and I was chatting to a few. I was, I, as party goes, I was pretty small. I was like, everyone here is really quite tall. They're giants, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all really tall. I'm like 16, this is weird. Anyway, mm. went to my first day of Abercrombie Fitch as a job and I was like, I'm going to be on the front of the door. I'm going to have my top off. This is going to be great. They put me in the stock room and I wasn't allowed to use the stairs. Like, I, had to, I had to use the back entry. But, but you were still naked. Right? I, was never, I was never allowed to go on the shop floor. I wasn't allowed. I never, That's I was like, so what the fuck? I was, I was in the stock room. Is it the stock room with white walls and that bright white lighting? Did you drive with me? How did you guess? Oh. I worked oh, there as well. Oh. Wait, oh you guys might have crossed yeah, paths. But Jamie, I she also was, thought she the was, same. She was front. She was no, front. No, no, no. I thought, no. I thought I was going to be front of house. I was dead excited. Oh, All my friends thought it was the coolest thing ever. Yeah. And I got there. <laughs> it made me cashier, put me behind the tills. At least, really? at least you're in the shop. <laughs> and I have to say, every time you, well, every you time wouldn't you know this you went on the phone. <laughs> yeah, every time I stole money. No, I had to say every time, hey, welcome to Abu Kambi and Fitch. Uh, be sure to check out Gilly Hicks at Westfield Shopping Centre. Which was, the, which, was their other, a, which was their other chain, right? Were you in a yes. hostage situation as well? Is that what you <laughs> there was just to, someone underneath the table. Someone underneath the table. Essentially, yeah. So, so, how, yeah. So, so you did modelling, age of 10, you got scouted by Models 1? Yes. Well, actually, no, I approached them. <laughs> I honestly, for saying, I was like, that is a big move. Uh, but, but, but I did, as, were your parents a bit like, that seems like young to go into. I thought that. it was crazy. Yeah. They thought it was an airplane model, like company to create like toy airplane models. When Models One called my home line, and <laughs> we said hotline, <laughs> when they called my home line and like spoke to my parents, because obviously I'd said I was under 16 or under 18. I got home and my dad was just at the front door and he was like, who's Models One? What? Yeah. I was like, wait, what? That is wild. Yeah. And I was like, they called you? And my mum was like, yeah, they want to see you tomorrow in London. And I was like, oh my gosh. Quite but exciting. 
it blew my been. mind. Yeah, I thought my been. entire life, I want my life to change. But you know. But so, so but is that because you always wanted to be in the entertainment industry? I always wanted to be an actor and I wanted, we didn't, we, it was acting is expensive, like acting classes. And we just weren't in the financial position to, for me to go to, you know, drama classes really or acting school. So I just knew I needed to fund it and I hate, fucking hated my paper round. So it was a great alternative for me. Dude, that's a vibe. I had no idea about that. Thanks, Wait, so Jamie. hang on. So you, so you really wanted to, firstly, acting, to become an actor is expensive. For me, well, yeah. I mean, everyone I know always says yeah. how expensive it is, you know, because there's not many routes to doing it. Yeah. So it all just seems super expensive. Yeah. So, so you had this vision of this is what you wanted to do. It's, it's strange, right? Because a lot of people, um, when you're younger, you say, I want to be an actor or whatever. Yeah. And people don't really go into that. But you had this like laser focus yeah. where this is what you, I remember the first time we met, you were like, Please yeah. Don't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, it's all right. Go on. Immediately, what were you going to say? Immediately, we need to okay, well, talk about that. She what was trying to get off of me. Like, <laughs> it's just awkward. Now the just, truth, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> she just tried to get off of me. I was like, Wallace, look, I don't fancy you. <laughs> now the truth, Jamie. <laughs> Come on. I, I keep, think what happened was we were going. in a nightclub and there was this like cute girl, and I was like. Pff, pff, I'm on Manny Charles. She's obviously going to fancy me. <laughs> and I think she was literally like, just fuck off. <laughs> was it something along those lines? That were? And I, then I messaged you the whole time, I feel. Yeah. And then you, I think not stalkering, like oh, not in no. a stalker way, really? in a very sweet way. You followed me to my Uber. Did made, I? made sure I got in. Okay. We'll Did call I? it that. You, yeah. thought, you thought that was kind. It, <laughs> was, like, it was definitely stalking. No, no, Wait, explain it. Sweet. Did I do that? Yeah. Then I, mean, I drove the I Uber. Think, I think <laughs> <laughs> you were my Uber driver. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Did I do that? Did I do yeah, that? Yeah. I think you were just making sure I got in the car. Okay. No, I don't. I think I was definitely hoping to kiss you or something as we were going to the Uber. And you were literally. You were like, wind down. I was like, mm. no, I'm joking. <laughs> wind it down. <laughs> You're like this on the door handle. I was oh like, oh <laughs> my God, that's so awkward. <laughs> no, no, no. You were lovely. No, what I was going to say is that you were laser focused into this industry. And the first time you met, I remember you saying that you were an actor. And I think what happens when people are younger, they have this sort of vision of wanting to do it. And then they kind of start stepping into the industry and they realize how difficult and hard and competitive all these different things are. But you have still sort of, sort of pushed yourself through that, through thick and thin. Yeah. And, and, and people, look, people go onto your Instagram, right? And they will see you and they will see a beautiful person who is doing these TV shows and these movies and things like that. And actually underneath it all, what you realize is you were freaking grafted for like a long ass time to, to, to get where you are. And people just think things are overnight success. Yeah, they do. And, and they're, they're totally not. But I, I just want to hear what you feel about all of that. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. And when I look back, you know, 13 was over 10 years ago now. And, and I have really worked and, and focused, you know, pretty much every single day in the last decade to, to do this. So yeah, it's, it's not an overnight thing at all, but, but you're right. It does. It, I, I guess it can look like that for a lot of actors or artists or musicians or whatever. Do, do you think because of the way that you look, you could be typecast? Absolutely. That's one of the reasons I cut my hair. Really? Yeah. What? Yeah. So you weren't typecast? What would I was you, what fed would you be typecast up. as if you had? Um, I was constantly going for like... <sighs> I mean, first world problems, but like Zac Efron's girlfriend Ooh. in movies and stuff or the girl next door. And I just nightmare. wanted more, absolute nightmare. I just wanted more depth though to a character. Yeah. Like that yeah. wasn't the job that I wanted to do. You know, that wasn't, yeah. But, but that's, that's a, I, I suppose that's a risky, ri firstly, I, I think, look, to a lot of people, um, people would jump at that opportunity, but also, um, you know, I remember Johnny Depp, he had this amazing interview, right? And it's, it's Johnny Depp, right? But he was always saying he was always, being pushed towards a certain character all the time. This like, this like pretty boy character who was this and who was that. And he just kept saying no, 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 no to all these opportunities. Mm. And a lot of his friends were like, you're crazy. Mm. We're, like, we're, we're not getting work and you're being offered these and things. He, he cut himself a what? mohawk. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, and it, it's, it's Johnny Depp, he's a bit of a weird dude. But, um, but I think with, <laughs> with your situation, I admire the fact that you had the, the balls to do that. Because a lot of people wouldn't. They would take the first opportunity and just do that. And you're going, actually, no, what I want to do is have more depth in the character. And you actually start to make a choice with your acting career rather than someone else making a choice for you. Yeah. Is that important when it comes to acting? Yeah, I think so. Um, 
you know, I think it's so easy for people to kind of determine your route or, or how they see you um, and try and choose that uh, career path for you or those roles for you. And I think it's really important to, you know, make it clear, you make your vision clear and make sure that you guys are on the same page and aligned with those visions. I, I guess that must happen quite a lot in the industry where like the powers that be, the guys that open the doors, they'll like, you know, they'll see a new actress and they'll go, right, she fits this. We're just going to push her into that direction. And then yeah. that actress then just doesn't get to explore like the shit yeah. that she wants to do. 20 years later, she's like... Yeah, well, look at like Matthew McConaughey, for example. He was doing r rom-com after rom-com for such a huge part of his career. Mm. And they were offering, you know, him millions to just Fool's to gold. do these. Fool's yeah, it was great. Yeah, I mean, it was great. But he just got to a point where he was like, no, like I wanted, I want more depth to to these roles or, or whatever. I don't know. But he said, I think he said no for like five years to every single script that came in. And then eventually he said, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> ah, there he is. There he is. There he is. There he is. But I suppose, how do you deal um with an industry that is so full of uncertainty. And I think that's, that's the hardest thing, right? You, you have to, you're, you're self-employed. Yeah. We were talking about before that, you know, um, and we've known each other for a long time and you're, you seem really busy at the moment and you're, you are busy, but you have to take time at some point to say, no, I don't want to do that. But in a world of uncertainty, it's very hard to do that. So how do you juggle that? Yeah, well, I haven't, this is going to be a guinea pig new trial because I've literally... I've never said, okay, I want to take a period of time off for myself before. So this summer will be the first time I do that. And I just want to take a couple of months off. You know, I want to be in London. I want to see my friends. I miss my family. You know, I'm, I, I keep missing uh, things that are important in life. You know, weddings, christenings, births, funerals, all kinds of things for my job. And I think it gets to a point after 10 years where I just you know, have to rethink what's important to me in my life. And that's not prioritizing that overacting in any way, but it's just saying, okay, do you know what? I'm going to have a healthier balance. Yeah, that's a, that's a big try. The hardest thing to do is to do that though. So hard. And you suddenly get to, yeah, it's so freaking hard. And you get to a point, my, my point was when I, I just had total burnout. And I spoke about this, this to you, right? I had, this, I had this moment where suddenly I was just like not enjoying anything. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, what? why am I not enjoying anything? Like right? even this podcast I remember doing it and it was, it was sort of, my, my weirdly came at a sort of a, a really bad time, but a great time. It was at the beginning of COVID. So uh -huh. I had that time to just chill and there was it's nothing. Literally going. the perfect time. Oh my God, yes, isn't happen. it? Yeah. Dude, I remember it, I was, I was yeah. walking with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're just coming out, baby. Uh, yeah, literally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yours is yeah right you, we've now. literally just come out of COVID and you're like, right, I need, uh, I need some time off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm knackered. But I remember, you won't remember this, but I was walking with you and we had just um, shot something I'd done. So I don't know what we had done. And I was walking with you and I was telling you mm. that I was just feeling, I was like, I just don't feel normal. Mm. I don't feel normal. And then that slowly, slowly, slowly. And I just kept working, 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 working. And it led to this moment where I just had no pleasure or no, I just didn't enjoy anything. Yeah. yeah. And, and you get to a place like that because you just push, push, push. And it's so true. We, we go, th like where, we met, what, 10 years ago, maybe, whatever probably, it is. Probably, yeah. yeah. Probably 10 years ago. Where has that time gone? I don't know. Dude, it just it's so goes. scary. I literally have no idea. And 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 we don't capture these moments. We we Mahiki. Like... Yeah, Mahiki. Was it? Was it? Okay. Mahiki's <laughs> no, no, no longer. It's been. Is it? It's gone now. I think. Sad I time. think so. I'm not sure. Do you just sure. go and sit in the building occasionally and just yeah, yeah. reminisce? Light, light a few candles. <laughs> get one of those chests out. But, and but it, it. But it. But it does. <laughs> it, it does go so fast. And I think a lot of people, especially in the acting industry, especially in like Hollywood and places like that. It's lonely sometimes as well. Can you, can you talk, do you get lonely? Yeah, yes, I do. I, this is only something that I've recently come to admit. Um, but Why didn't you admit it before? Because I didn't realize. Really? Yeah, and um, it, it's, it's strange because when you're filming something, you get, you know, like you guys have both experienced, you're with the same cast every single day. You get so close, like they're your family. I never got close. Uh, all right. <laughs> We're in this really There's always one, moment. isn't there? It's a really okay. profound moment. <laughs> Sorry, Karen. Yeah. Just a weird voice coming inside. Not, not me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not to me. Speak yourself. No, but go. So you, you're in an ensemble, right? Well, well it's just like a, con a consistent. And I think everyone in the industry, you know, that, that works on different projects can relate to this. But, you know, you get very close to a group of people that you spend a lot of time with for a short period of time. And then the job's over and you never see them again. That, that just mm. happens a lot of the time. So it's that constant getting close to people and then like moving on and then getting close to a new group again and moving on. And 
and I used to travel a lot with, you know, my manager or, or whoever. And just more recently, I haven't like, I, you know, I've been traveling solo a lot and I, I have a dog now who, who comes everywhere with me. But for the, this year, he hasn't been coming with me. And it just, it hit me for the first time. I was like, maybe I personify my dog a bit, but I was like, oh, like I'm alone. Like I'm doing all, you know, in hotels and on flights and stuff. Like I really am doing that alone. And it's just, it, 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 for the first time I was like, wow, actually this could be a really lonely existence if I didn't have the correct people around me, mm. i.e. my friends, family, team, you know. Yeah. And it seems, it is lonely. And it seems glamorous, right? Because you're going from hotel to different things to sets and stuff like that. But It sounds glamorous. But it's actually not. And when you no. pull back that, it's so funny. I, I, I remember this. I remember like doing all the shows that I've done. You, you, you yeah. go to like the set or whatever and you're like, oh my God. And then you get yeah. put in a green room and the green room is like- Alone. A, yeah, alone. <laughs> it's got like a kettle in it. and Yeah, like a one, few snacks. A few snacks, like one <laughs> channel. And you're yeah. like, this is low. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you, and like, I remember the first time I would like, I ever did a show, I would record my name on the door. It'd be like, Jamie, and I'd be like, oh my God. And I wouldn't go in. Because- <laughs> Because then you're alone. Yeah. You just stay in the hallway, right? Yeah. You're like, hey, hey, everyone. Hi. How you doing? Hey, what's up? Yeah. But, but so you suddenly realized that you felt a bit lonely. Yeah. And again, only recently, or even just, you know, you have like a few hours in between scenes sometimes, like just in the trailer mm. alone. And you know, what? I think it's because I've been on a different time zone recently. Um, so I was, I've been in Thailand for the majority of this year shooting there. And it's just, it's 12, actually, here, I don't know, is it, I think it's seven hours ahead, but it's just like, you know, the, there's just a huge part of your day where no one's awake. None of your British friends or American mm. like team or friends or whatever are up. And you're just like, like, what uh, do you do? It's, it's kind of good to have that, I think, for like a short period of time. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Like you were quite being, like that, weren't you? Well, I had to do you it. Quite, I had to do it like a little it. bit. Well, oh, like, okay, cut me off from the world. Yeah. Screw mobile phones. Yeah, screw the world, man. <laughs> Are you um, like that? Yeah, he's like that. No, no, I, I've, I, I like that. I got. I got <laughs> he said, "Can I say what you said to me?" He was like, he went, "I went." I was like, "What did you do this weekend?" He was I like, like, "I rented a camper van that you can live in, and I drove to Dorset." It was, was fucking like, banging. <laughs> and That's amazing. And yeah, it was so sick. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah, I feel, um, I even like the loser. But no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love me it too. Me like yeah, 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 yeah. What are you up to this weekend? Do you want to get a little camper? Sorry, making TikToks. Yeah. No, what I was going to say. Stay relevant. Please. Relevant <laughs> while you're going to actually enjoying the earth. <laughs> oh god, how do I stay young? Yeah. Just drinking just the, trending. Yeah, yeah, just drinking Botox. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to cover Botox? I'll have it. <laughs> no, um, go on. I can't remember what I was gonna say now. Oh yeah. No, like having forced alone time, right? Where you actually just have to yeah. sit on your own and you've just got to like deal with your own thoughts. It's actually kind of useful because it's almost like a it's like self-therapy. Yes. That's what I found yes. anyway. I was like, oh shit, actually, I haven't really thought about that because I've just been busy and talking to people and like doing shit. Yeah. And suddenly you're like, hmm, this is intense. No, you're, you're right. And you know what, there, there is for me anyway, like a huge aspect of that that I love. You know, I can work out or, or you know, have therapy or work on myself or whatever. But it's those, and if I'm really busy, like I'm in shooting every day or whatever, that's great because I can focus on my job and everything. But when I'm not in that much and I've got, I don't know, three days in the middle between Monday to Friday off, I'm like, all right. What trouble yeah. can I get into this week? Yeah, yeah like this yeah. naughty streak inside me just goes off. But mm. but okay, but maybe this is maybe this is too personal question. Feel free not to answer. Uh, d dating game. How how is the dating game at the moment? Yeah, it does that keep you? Does that but surely with that then you know people must be asking you on dates all the time. So that kind of maybe in a sense fills a void. What am I trying to say? <laughs> Don't know what I'm trying to say. How's the dating game at the moment? How is the dating game? Are you are you, are you dating? Are you dating? It's complicated. Okay. Not your Facebook, Facebook status, right? response. Yeah. <laughs> God. No, you don't have to answer. You don't have to answer. But I, I suppose that that's the, also the tricky thing uh, is, is when you're traveling so much, how the hell do you even, okay, let alone uh, yeah. keeping in contact with friends, right? Yeah. That, that's pretty tricky. Mm -hmm. Ke keeping like relationships going and dating, that's like a nightmare time. I'm, I'm with my girlfriend and I still find it hard to like have like time together. And you guys live together. And we live together. Yeah, 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 you yeah. know what I mean? And I feel like that when you're traveling around, that's would you even get more lonely because you're traveling around all the time. Yeah. I mean, uh, r right now, for me, I found that it's easier for me to kind of date someone in the industry because they either have a similar lifestyle mm. or they get it. Mm. Um, you know, that's not to say that I wouldn't date outside the industry. I absolutely would. But that's just kind of how I found recently with time zone changes and and time differences and different schedules and everything like that 
I just find it easier to kind of date someone who understands that or is on a similar page to me. Do, do you mentioned that? Do you do therapy? Yeah. Oh my God. So do I, I, I love therapy. Dude, it's I gr- need, I need it weekly. Otherwise I'm like, Argh. thank you so much. Like, explain yeah. why, why you, you like it so much. What does it do for you? Firstly, I think, I think therapy should be accessible to absolutely everyone. Absolutely. And I think it would have saved, you know, I can only speak from personal experience, but I think it would have saved me a lot of time um, and other things if I had started therapy, you know, earlier. And I don't know whether that's because there was a stigma around it, yeah. you know, say 10 years ago, or or it can be quite expensive. I don't know. Um, but I absolutely love therapy. It's it's healed me in so many ways. And I've just, you know, it just helped me learn so much more about myself do, every day. Do you think you've become more empathetic towards others? Because 100%. Yeah, that's my big thing. <laughs> yeah. I never gave a shit about other people. <laughs> you are you are a lot nicer these days. You do used you think to, I am? You used to be a massive arsehole. Yeah. <laughs> massive. I, I am, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolute twat. <laughs> yeah, I really was. You were horrible. Yeah, I really... <laughs> I really was. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine I, that. Oh, I really was. <laughs> Ow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was my ego hitting you. <laughs> the, I, I really was. For me, um, therapy was uh, the greatest thing because it made me realize not everyone thinks the way I think. And I think that mm. a lot of people don't realize that is that people go into therapy because they go, okay, I'm depressed, I'm anxious, I'm OCD, I'm this, I'm that, all these different things, which yeah. is great. And you learn how to deal with those things, whatever yes. that may be. And I think acceptance is the coolest thing that anyone can do in life. But what therapy then does manifest itself into is you then really understanding yourself and then understanding others. So realizing mm. that actually, if you're having a good day, that could mean that someone else is having a bad day. And you can understand that. And you're not just going, well, why aren't they feeling, not pointing at you, Miss, because you're having a great day. You're having a great day, right? <laughs> he was until this point. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. I, I always tell this guy to go to therapy and he never does. I have been. You went once I and been. you bailed on the, it. The, no, no. Turned I went, up drunk. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, it was, I got banned. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you want to go on a date? <laughs> I, think, I think I'm too much of a, an empath. I don't know if that's the, the correct word, but like, I feel so much for what they're feeling that I almost don't want to like fully dive on. Burden, but burn. yeah, I'm like, I don't really want to like, you okay, you have a good day. Like, I'm just like, yeah, I hold shit back. So I don't think you it's You sit very, down and you're like, it's very talk useful. to me. Yeah, I'm like, come on, you're looking a little bit stressed. <laughs> I'll be your like, soundboard. Yeah, 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 literally. So I don't think it works that well. I, mean, I know what you mean. Hey, what is, um, mm. we got to the end of part one there. Oh, great. Yeah, dude. Um, I went so quick. Yeah. Hey, hey. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I feel like we've just had a round in the pub. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. That is exactly, I love it. Talking of rounds in a pub, um, we like to leave our listeners on a cliffhanger. Oh. Yeah, so... Um, what does that have to do with rounds in the pub? I don't know. I just... I, this is a <laughs> terrible segue. Yeah, okay. Well, fuck, fuck you. You did better segue. <laughs> no. All right. Talking about rounds in a pub, um, uh, we like to leave our listeners on a cliffhanger. So um, I thought a nice cliffhanger would be is that you can give us an insight into the new series that you've just shot. Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Is that a good insight? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm shooting a Netflix show right now. Oh, God. Called Sex Life. Oh, my God. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I play a super cool character uh, yeah. called Gigi. Oh, God. Gigi. Yeah, here we go. All right. Yeah, cover up your... <laughs> cover your, up your genitals. Your bonus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're coming back in a second. See you in part two, everybody. Hello everyone, welcome back to part two of Private Parts, the podcast where nothing is off limits. Mm. I just went Ooh. a bit camp there as I was saying, I don't know, nothing is off the limits. Um, <laughs> I love it, it yeah, suits you that. You got, you, you, yeah? Hello yeah. everyone. Hey. You had quite a saucy dream the other night, didn't you? Saucy. <laughs> saucy. You can't bring this up. You spoke about it on this, that nothing's off limits. So. Uh, go to our bonus episode if you want it. <laughs> Your bonus sorry? episode. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going. Yeah. I had a dream the other night. Don't worry, I've heard. And, uh, yeah, have, you, have, have you heard it? Well, I had a dream about At school? Yeah. yeah. No, I had a dream about me at school. I yeah. do my research. You listened to the bonus <laughs> Where, yeah, the guy, my friend was giving me a hand job. Yes, oh, Jamie. Yeah. Which, which friend was it? Not gonna say. <laughs> what a man. He's quite a good friend of mine. <laughs> Is he actually? Yeah. He was at school with me. Ah. He was like chasing me and I was like, catch me. He might. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I was in the dream, like it was one of the dreams where I was like waking up and going, like, fall back to sleep. It's yeah. great. <laughs> I love it. Best yeah. hand job I've ever had. You have to like try and muster it back up, don't you? Yeah, oh, yeah. and then mum, get out. Just, what? Not she in doing? the dream. She's just, oh my I gosh. Know, just back it. She's like, Jamie, time for school. <laughs> you, it's, but sex, have you, it's, have you had sex dreams? Have you had a sex dream? 
Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> so that's okay. It's all I dream about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> stop. Yeah. It's such I'm a like way. a teenage boy. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, your, your new TV show you just shot. Yes. Sex Life on Netflix. Yeah. Dude, you're, you're killing the game at the moment. Like, like, what have you shot recently? Okay, so let, let's talk about the things that you, you've been involved with. Sure. Okay, you've done Batwoman. Yeah. That's, that's like, that's a huge franchise. Yeah, that was so fun. So how does it work? So your, your agent phones you up and go, uh, well, <laughs> so you're killing it at the moment. You got, do you get excited now about these things? Or Absolutely. Is that like a sort of real dream come true type thing? Yeah, that kind of stuff. I love that kind of stuff. Um, I seem to have done like more superhero stuff in, I think I manifested it too much when I was young and then I just kept getting superhero yeah. genre. Oh, manifested, you're yeah. like, shit. I'm like, damn, oh. I really need to do some Netflix from cops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you something. But that's amazing because that's like a, I mean, firstly to, to get into a franchise like that, that's hard. Yeah. And, and do you have to go and audition for it? How does it work? Yeah, you know, I, I did audition and I thought after the Superman show that I did that I could only be in the Superman category. Um, and so I never thought it was going to happen. And I still auditioned and I still still went up for it. Um, and then I actually didn't get the role originally. Um, and then they called me up uh, ba- nine ba- months Batman later phoned. for Batman phoned. <laughs> He's like, you, you got he the job. He was like... <laughs> <laughs> they were just like, hey, like we we want Kate Kane, and we think that you're perfect. Amazing! Wow. Are you still interested? Are you still available? And I was like, absolutely. I mean, there was a bit more than that. I had to <laughs> I had to resend off like another tape and stuff. Really? But, but it was kind of you know paraphrasing. It was kind of like that. When when, yeah. when things like that, when th- so you 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 go to they say right, you're going to go an audition for that. So you walk into is it what I imagine is you walk into a room and there's a whole bunch of other actors there and you have to then walk into is it work like that or you do know, you have sort of slots in a way? Yeah, you do have slots. You know, it's kind of crazy because in the last, oh, since COVID, it's changed so much that like, I used to walk into an audition in London or in, especially in LA and there would be 20 other girls who look yeah. exactly like me oh my God. who actually have real American accents. <laughs> oh, shit. And yeah, and it used to really kind of throw me. Yeah. And yeah, you have a slot. Um, but now it's, it's kind of all tapes now because I guess because of COVID, I guess it's more convenient. Way more convenient. Yeah. So it's just an audition tape. So you just tape with someone that like Jamie was saying earlier, I get obsessive and I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Oh, because you can watch it you back, obviously. You can just obviously, keep like, going. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Shit. the only thing I will say is that in a room, a lot of screen tests are still in person, but in a room, like you vibe, like the energy, like it's make yeah, it's or different. break. It's like a moment. Yeah. yeah. Like you ride on the... Just, just the adrenaline, man. Like you just, and you just don't get that in a tape. But also, I think, I, I think that's also it's a, be, it's a positive. But also, I can imagine it's, it's not a benefit because, um, you, you, you meet humans. Uh, there, there are other humans, right? That's the people yeah. who are casting you. And so when you chat to them, they get a vibe of who you mm. are, and you can always yeah. charm people over. Where now you don't yeah. have that ability. Now it's just I don't like, know if I ever had that. <laughs> we'll go with that. Yeah. I'm just thinking about me when I go into acting. But do you get nervous when you do it or no? Do you ever? Do you know what? I still get nervous for tapes. We 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 did a tape the other day and the mic the the mic was too sensitive and you could hear oh. my heart pounding. Wait, hang on. So the so you you could hear your heartbeat on it. Yeah. Do you know what? We were watching it back. We'd already sent it off and we were watching oh, it no. back. Well, we'd watched it back the first time, hadn't noticed, and then we watched it back again. And all of a sudden, halfway through, just as it's getting to an emotional point, because your heart, because you're in it, right? Yeah. yeah. All we could hear, we could just. That, that, would, add, that would add to the drama. That would like, well, it's like, we got a you know what? <laughs> it was actually a note. It was a note that they gave back to us saying, we loved it because we, we, we love what you did. It was and real. I actually got the job. Real. Yeah, I got the job. Yeah. Now I every, don't know if that's the reason I got every it. Every time you shoot, I've been doing it ever since. Have... And... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, make a heartbeat. That's actually so interesting. Would you say, okay, so. Perhaps, okay, so to any, any budding actors out there who are going out there to try and do the same thing, yeah. are you Just saying- Sniff be a ton of jacks up. Yeah, so. get, your, jacks get your labia up. on your, <laughs> on your heart. But, but are you saying that like being authentic, I suppose, is the way, you're obviously acting, but yeah. being authentic, and how, that, how do you be authentic, but also act at the same time? You don't try and act. So you try and find the truth in the character or you personify you know, if, if I'm seeing someone, a really good mate that I love, you know, if that's what the scene is, I envisage a really good mate that I love and I share that scene with them and I think how I would be and I take elements of that character that are similar to my traits and I emphasize them. 
You have to be incredibly emo- emotionally intelligent. You have to be very, yeah, emotionally available and emotionally conscious. But which, which is dangerous. Yeah. Because that opens. Tell me your, about it. Yeah, because that opens yourself up to vulnerability within yourself. Yes. They, and, well, they say take from scars and not wounds. Wow. Okay. Mm. Which yeah. is something that took me nearly a decade yeah, to. Can, can you can you expand that? Can you expand that a bit? What do you what, what do you what do you mean more like that? So draw from wounds, as in draw from things that you've healed from, that uh, you know that still remind you of the way that you felt then, and you can still connect to and pull from, um, as opposed to uh, sorry, uh, sorry, scars. pull from a scar. So yeah. something that's healed, so something that you can still pull from, and then healthily move forward from, rather than you know, a wound, an open wound, which is still raw, which you haven't quite had enough therapy from yet, or, you know, it hasn't been enough, a long period of time, because sometimes if you do, I find anyway, if I pull from a wound, I find it hard to, you know, stitch back up. Like I can leave set and it's still thinking. You nail the scene. Oh, (laughs) okay. So this is the bad thing is you absolutely nail the scene because it's raw. It's real. So, so, so sometimes, occasionally I'll do it on purpose and I'll say, do you know what? I'm just going to have a shit night after this, but like, it's going to work. But I think oh, sometimes you pull that nice. secret weapon. Yeah, but they do say not to because it can be a bit dangerous. Wow. <laughs> but that's so interesting. So, so you, because I, I, we all have scars and we all have wounds, but I, I, I would find it tricky to remember what a wound felt like unless it's a real deep wound. A scar would feel like and if it was a really deep scar, yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to draw emotion from saying I've healed. You have to try and put yourself back in that place, Jamie. So just say it was something that happened to you when you were nine. When you lost your, you ha- when you lost your credit card. When I was card. in the swimming pool with that teacher. <laughs> well, there you go. You have when to you, connect you to your inner your child. <laughs> <laughs> Joke. I'm kidding there. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. You're a very fast swimmer, actually. <laughs> Where did you learn? Butterfly out yeah. of the pool. <laughs> no, wait, hang on. So you, you put yourself back in that position. Yeah, you, you have that to so heal. Dangerous, like you're in a child. Yeah, well, yeah, it is. It that is. That is so dangerous. Uh, maybe it would speak That's why of... I go to therapy, Jamie. <laughs> yeah. No, I can imagine. But I just find that so interesting. I just didn't realize that was what you'd. How I would do it, okay, I would see a script, right? Yeah. I would see a script and I would go, okay, fine. These are words to me. And yeah. okay, fine. I kind of, this character is kind of boisterous. Okay, I'm going to act in a boisterous way, boo, 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 like that. Yeah. And, and po- I probably would only be surface level, but I would get the job done and act. Yeah. You, you, you're saying because you're a perfectionist, you really have to get that raw emotion out of. So every single, if you're dying every single night in scripts, yeah. you're dying in real life. Yes, absolutely. That's and, and wild, when you're, that energy that you're, that you're yeah. giving out all the time. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. And, and when you are dying and you're in that moment, you know, you have to, you have to think through your life and you have to flash like, you, you know, through your family and your memories and your friends and everything that you're about to lose, like to really muster up that raw, real emotion. Can you can you die convincingly? Because that's the one thing in movies that some people just can't do. They're like, eh, no, no. <laughs> but, but do you know what? That depends on whether they're having a good day or not. <laughs> <laughs> Jay had to do his uh, his orgasm sound on the podcast, and it was terrifying. It sounded a little bit like the noise. Can we hear? Did. It can't uh, be worse than your Bristolian accent. Okay, yeah, <laughs> one, one more time. <laughs> no, that's not, that's not my Sorry, do you don't get nervous. Okay, what would it be? Oh God! What would it I'm gonna be? really Come put on. myself. Okay, I'm gonna really <laughs> yeah, look, put look, myself look, in the moment. Open up that wound. Okay, here we go. Jimmy's I'm really, like, I'm gonna really put myself in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is, they always come first. <laughs> What? You're saying that to her. Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. You're doing. Sorry. You're doing. <laughs> sorry, sorry. You're doing a monologue too. She's probably like, "Oh my god, he's going to murder me." <laughs> the problem is, they always come first. She's like, "I'm going to the police." I, 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 I just, I can't get myself. In, I can't on, get myself. I can't do it. Okay. All right. I'm going to really try and get myself All into right. that moment of having an August. Oh god. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Here we go, Jamie. It's just acting. That's what we're doing. Okay, here we go. It's just acting. Uh, oh, oh god. god. <laughs> That was I fucking horrible. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't commit. I can't commit. I can't commit. I can't commit. I'm the sorry. thing is with acting is you have to throw yourself in the deep end, Jamie. It is too freaking hard. What's yours? <laughs> Your, yours is like, Alex, like, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm <laughs> done. I always used to do that in class. I used to annoy my teachers yeah, so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That would great. do it. Just going back to that thing, because I really honestly and truly believe that if you're reaching for those emotions all the time, yeah. that is setting yourself up for a, a really um, hard experience. You're, you're, you're dying all the time. You are f- 
breaking up with people all the time. You're 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 injured all the time. You're you're crying all the time, and then you have to leave all of that. It's motion. not real, Jamie. You're, you're, no, I know. You're, you're Bristolian most <laughs> no, of the time. But, you, but it's hard. But you 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 take that with you, I suppose. What, what does? Sorry. Yeah. I've always wondered this. How much does it interfere with your actual life? Because obviously you're tapping yeah, psychologically. in. psychologically. You're tapping into this like real emotion all the time and you're playing this real emotion. Then when actual real emotion comes along, yeah, you're like, yeah. well, actually, I kind of know how to deal with this. <laughs> yes. See, see it's, it, is, it can be beneficial. Just to quickly answer your question, mm. I think it's a practice. Like your mind is a muscle, right? So I think it's a great practice to be able to, you know, try and put a lid on you know, your toolbox at the end of the day and go, okay, they were my emotions. I tapped yeah, into this, this great. and this, and now I'm going to close that box and I'm going to go off. I'm going to go for a run, sweat it out or <laughs> Do loads of shower. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, pick your poison. Yeah, yeah, yeah pick your poison. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, did I say that out That wasn't where I was going, but sure, if that's what works for you. Um, but then in response to what you were saying, yeah, I, I think it can be beneficial. It can be detrimental as well. I've, you know, I've used people <laughs> that I have to be angry at. I have personified mm. it and I've thought of someone and then, you know, they've texted me up and I don't fucking message me <laughs> halfway through the day. They've yeah. done nothing wrong, but I've used them to, you know, be, I guess, you know. That's I, insane. Have you, um, because I'll of the, 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 yeah, have you um, been to Comic-Con? Yeah. Have you done that? Yeah. I've done it a few times. Okay, tell me how, for anyone, for listeners who don't know what it is, can you explain what it is? Sure, yeah. It's basically a massive comic convention, hence yeah. Comic Con. And it's where, you know, comic book um, enthusiasts come together um, and get to meet, you know, the actors playing the characters that they adore or, you know, get to meet these people, get to connect in real life with with other, you know, comic book enthusiasts and get to just have like the best weekend of their who, lives. Who did you get to meet? <laughs> that, was good, that was good. Um, but do but do you but, but it's do, great for do us they as well. go what do they go crazy? Yeah. They but, really but, do. It, but it amps me up too. I mean they don't all, but but a lot of the time they do, but it makes me excited as well. Like I'm excited, I'm just as excited to meet them because, you know, a lot of a huge part of me believes that I only uh, got Batwoman because because of the fans because I don't know you're probably not aware but they kind of rooted you know they they rooted for me to be on that show on social media and did they yeah yeah they did they really did when when Ruby left they they kind of uh, like campaigned for for Ruby's role to be they just thought I'd be a great candidate because they'd see me on the Superman show and and I really didn't expect it I, it was crazy and. So that felt like I maybe got that call because of that social media buzz. So I'm just as thankful to them. Wow. I truly am. Like, I, I believe that, I genuinely believe I probably wouldn't have got here today if it wasn't for them in terms that of that. That is wicked. So I can, you know, do you know what I mean? It's a two-way thing. I love them. I think they're great. And the energy is uncomparable. It's just crazy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's great. I love it. But but so where where does the love for all of it come from? Does it come from where it's just the love of the art? Is it the love of making people happy and entertaining them? Is it all of the above? Where does it, the real passion come from? Honestly, I, I feel like I just want to tell stories that people might not be exposed to, you know, in, in their everyday lives. I feel like there's so many important stories to tell and experiences that need to, you know, be shown and, and known without a stigma of, you know, let's just say mental health or, mm. or, or whatever it can be. And I, I honestly feel honored to be able to, to portray those, those kind of characters and tell those kind of stories. Yeah, I, I do. I think that's, that's it where you get to do. I, I heard that you also, um, you, did you write? It's not true. A, yeah, it is true. <laughs> it is. It. You wrote a, you wrote a book, right? Yeah. You Which one? <laughs> yeah. Have you written a lot? Because you're a few. Yeah. And you want to get these done into uh, get because it's script writing, right? And you want to turn oh, yeah. them into movies. Yeah. There's one that I I really want to. Can turn you tell into us what it is? Yeah. Sure. It, it's it's called Chemistry, or that that's just its name at the moment. It doesn't doesn't have to be that that, but that's been its name for the last uh, seven years. Shut up. You wrote this yeah. seven years ago. Yeah. 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 I wrote it when I was nineteen. And, and I just really believe it. I, I feel like it's such a good story and the characters are so strong. And I, I wanted the opportunity. I had just worked with Warner Brothers and I wanted the opportunity to take it to them and turn it into a screenplay. Um, so I went, I'm, I met with Rat Pack and they loved it. Wow. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Get out of town. <laughs> what the hell are we doing here? <laughs> Get the um, job. <laughs> Get the jet. Let's go. Dude, that's insane. 
thank you. Well, hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and they they wanted it. You know, they kind of gave me six months to 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 write it and finish it off. And I just so happened to get you know a really great role, and I just I had to kind of choo choose one or the other at that point. And I chose the other one, but but hey, like it's still very much on the cards. And you know, again, I said that I wanted to take some time off this summer. A lot of that I do, I do want to focus on writing. I really want to release a poetry book as well. I have a, about a decade worth of poems that I just need to purge. Oh my god, that's really pleasure. <laughs> there's, there's this real incredible buzz at the moment for female writers. Like, like uh, I mean, if we look at Phoebe Waller-Bridge, yeah. um, Rose Matafeo, the comedian, yes. um, Dolly Alderton, who's got her BBC. Like great, these, these, great these, example. like, like great. I feel like there's this real, and it's and and also like uh, British as well, yeah. which is like there's Feels this, like Hollywood's come over here. Yeah, but why? Moment. But is that is that the sense over in LA where people people meet you when they go to Britain? They go, ah, oh, you're you're trained. You're an actor. Where over there they're just kind of like, yeah, this is what I'm trying. There's, it seems to be a difference. There's definitely a difference. You know, from personal experience, I'd say that they're a lot less, um, that training is a lot less important to them over there. Mm. I, I, I feel like, I, I feel like here the industry can be quite, um, trying to find the right word here, but they can be quite focused on the kind of training that you've had or, or your background. Whereas mm. in America, I feel like they're a lot more open-minded and, you know, they'll just, they'll just want to see you and, and, and cast you based on your experience in the yeah. room in the audition yeah. which which i personally prefer dude this is insane and the, the big thing that we like to ask on private parts always is um and i always think like checking out especially you, got like, you happy at the moment yes see that's the greatest thing <laughs> what does happiness mean to you though um i th for me personally it's just it's doing what i love to do um and it's having the people that i love happy and healthy around me Really? It's it's literally that simple. It really is. And you know, the last time someone asked me that question, I said no. Like, I'm very honest with that question. Really? Yeah, because I, I believe that you don't, you know, people, no one's always happy, no. right? You're just not. So I, I try and always be super authentic as I can with that question. But yeah, the answer is I'm, I'm really happy at the minute. And what shifted to do that for you, do you think? I would say a lot of it has been healing therapy. Yeah. Um, And I just think focusing just drowning out the noise and the toxicity coming within the industry well. coming on this you know <laughs> that was the real game i was a different changer. person before this <laughs> really profound moment again and uh, <laughs> he, he steps day. in he steps in can i add no. this to my imdb <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't worry i'm going to do that already <laughs> yeah yeah first result <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i haven't even got home yet yeah yeah <laughs> sex life's just like scribbled yeah. out <laughs> no, you can't do that because on the computer <laughs> oh <laughs> um, do you want to listen? Um, I just want to say a big thank you for coming on the podcast. I really do. Um, I, 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 I love it when people. I sometimes I hear people talk about you, right? And who, like, I mean, no, in good ways, right? In good ways. And it's it's I friends. Promise I don't agree with what they say. Honestly. <laughs> I, I think you're lovely. No, but it's friends, or I'll be in a room, or I don't know in TV, and someone will say your name, and I feel very proud when I say that you you know I know you and you're a buddy. Yeah, and I really do. So it, it's a it's a great thing to see your friends killing it. The and feelings mutual. Yeah, I, I, I you know what I'm killing it. <laughs> do, you, do you hear his name often? So around LA. I yeah, I imagine it's sort of banded around quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Like> Jamie Langer. <laughs> Let's get him over here. But dude, in all honesty, I truly do. And you, you're, you're, you're one of the greats and, I, and I, you fully deserve it. Thank you, James. 100%. Dude, what we'd like, anything else coming up that you're excited about? Honestly, yes. There's so much, there's yeah. so much that I'm excited about for life right now. Um, I'm about to start shooting something else that I'm super excited what? about. But I do want to thank you for having me. And, oh, and you know, I love you guys. You guys are great. And I really appreciate it. Anytime. Support. Listen, what we'd like to do at the end of the podcast is leave our listeners with something inspirational. Oh great! I'll, I'll uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a good one. Um, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll do my climax sound like you just yeah, did. Just do it. Do it. <laughs> uh, I think I just came. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, if I was going to say something inspirational, I'd say uh, I think it's just really important to uh, like authentically just be yourself, unapologetically, always, um, and no matter who that pisses off, because you'll find your right people that way. Love that. Wallace Day, thank you so much. Everybody, we'll see All you next right. week. Goodbye.